Our next story is about China's great wall of debt, a wall that has left Chinese authorities banging their heads against it and China's large enterprises filing for bankruptcy. First, it was Evergrande. Now, it's Zhongzi. According to reports, the Chinese asset management giant has filed for bankruptcy. And why is that? Why else but due to an ability to pay debts? And this development, by the way, comes weeks after China launched an investigation into the debt-ridden financial giant. Here's what a statement published by a Beijing court on WeChat reads. Let me quote, Zongzi applied for bankruptcy liquidation because it cannot pay off in debts that are due. Its assets are insufficient to pay off all debts and it clearly lacks the ability to repay in full. We found that the application meets the reasons for bankruptcy specified. Remember in November... Cops in Beijing, where, where Zongzi is headquartered, had launched an investigation into the company's affairs. They said that it was probing the company for alleged offences and had taken measures against several suspects. What offences, you ask? And which measures? This the police did not specify. Zongzi, which is little known outside financial spheres, had earlier declared itself insolvent. This was after its areas were estimated to be at nearly $66 billion. But that was not always the case. During China's real estate boom, many developers used Zongzi to finance their projects. In fact, according to investment bank Nomura, the company managed assets worth more than 1 trillion yuan or $141 billion. But in recent years, the group caught, caught up in China's property crisis, leaving it unable to repay the investors. And now Zongzi's bankruptcy raises fears of far-reaching consequences for China's financial system. Especially given how it follows the downward spiral of property developer Evergrande, whose troubles continue to take a toll on the country's real estate sector and the economy overall. Last year... In fact, just in October last year, a Reuters report said that local government debt in China had risen to 92 trillion yuan or $12.58 trillion. This number is truly staggering and if analysts are to be believed, matters are set to get even worse. They say next year, uh, in fact this year itself, China is set to sink further into debt. They predict a rise of 4 trillion yuan, that's equivalent to $570 billion. Now, for the sake of perspective here, this debt far exceeds America's burden. As of December 2022, America's overall debt was around $31.4 trillion. China's relative debt burden is at least 40% higher than this. And if this does not highlight, highlight the precarious situation that China is in, then perhaps it's worth considering this report. It says due to this massive debt distress, Chinese cities are struggling to pay their bills. They are slashing the wages, cutting the public services and reducing the fuel subsidies. And where are these cities located? Mainly in these provinces. Heilongjiang, Hebei, Guangdong. Zhejiang, Jiangsu, Hunan, all these provinces are struggling with mountains of debt and the road to recovery is not quite visible. So from the property giants to banks to local governments, almost everything in China is sinking under debt. Yet there is no public anger or fury that is being directed at the Chinese officials because Chinese governments, of course, don't have to face elections. It's a one-party dictatorship which cannot be overthrown by legal or constitutional means. But just for how long can the government shut down public anger with an authoritarian plug? For how long can it ignore the growing debt problem? For how long can it leave the local governments to fend for themselves? Chinese citizens have started to raise these questions with unpredictable consequences. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.